the court. Hi, everybody. This is Zen Honeycutt of Moms Across America, and it is Monday night, December 3rd, on our Moms Connect call. We're now doing a half an hour call where we get to hear from you. And we were just listening to, to Richard, Talk To Me Guy, who has a great radio show. Please check out his radio show, interviewing with, with some of the best um, conversations that, that I have had with an interview. And Richard was just talking about 5G. So I wanted to touch upon that because we talk about on these calls anything and everything that is harming our children and our families and of course also our pets. And we wanted to talk about that. So Richard was just saying that 5G is particularly bad news because it doesn't have a long reach, it has a short reach. And so there will need to be 5G kind of like towers on practically every other house. And so what's happening now is that people are waking up and there's one on, on the light pole or whatever right outside their house. And that's happening in, I believe, was it Sacramento or does anybody know which towns that's happening in 5G? Sacramento. Sacramento, I think Sacramento. was the first one. Yeah, it's fully, fully 5G in Sacramento and they're having health problems. Well, if anybody gets, there's also, there's also, oh, but there's also another issue is that there are gonna be a lot of short range uh, satellites that are gonna to have to be launched continually and the amount of carbon that they're gonna be emitting is also gonna be a problem. And your sweat glands are gonna act like antennas for this 5G radiation, this MMR medium uh, wavelength radiation. And they're actually developing it as a crowd dispersal um, weapon because it can actually make your um, skin um, burn. It's really bad news. Yeah, it, if you want to learn more about this, one of the uh, leading experts is Nick Pinault, P-I-N-E-A-U-L-T, and he just recently did a summit, and uh, I know some of you may know uh, Dr. Klinghard, who's, who's phenomenal, and he was one of his guests too. I learned a heck of a lot watching that. Do you like my new glasses? These are my blue blue blocking glasses, you know, just being on the computer at night. But it, everybody definitely needs to turn their Wi-Fi off in their house at night. Never, yes. never leave it on at night. And not just your Wi-Fi, but if you have a cordless phone, if you have a smart TV, all of those things too. But anyway, look that guy up if you want to learn more. Yeah, Nick Penault and also um, Dr. Klinghart's video about 5G is really awesome. He said that the kids with the extreme health issues, they would not recuperate if the parents did not eliminate the EMFs in their right. house. That they, it just it messed up their ability to recover so much. Klinghart is K-L-I-N-G-H-A-R-T, Dr. Klinghart. He is really brilliant and is esteemed by many other doctors and scientists around the world. And, and he talks about the 5G. Yeah. It, it's, the spelling is K-L-I-N-G-H-A-R-D-T. Oh, D-T, sorry. Okay. D-T, and it's the klinghartinstitute.com. So if you want to Google that. Yeah, and, and the interesting thing also that I saw, unfortunately, because we, we were thinking about uh, promoting you know, the discs that you can put in the back of your phone, those things to stop the EMFs. Um, and we've asked this company, we may still promote it if they have a good answer, but we've asked this particular company for their response to what Dr. Klinghart says. He says that those pads simply um, hide the, basically the, the, I don't want to say the symptoms, but like they hide the fact that those waves can be damaging and the waves are still damaging. Do you see what I'm saying? Like they don't stop the damage. They just sort of make mask. it. Yeah, they mask it, yes, you, that you can't see. Julie, did you want to say something? You yeah, well, I was told that the radiation comes through the edges of the phone, not the back. <clears throat> okay, so I, I emailed um, uh, Nick Penault because he was promoting the safe sleeves which is a, you know, a case that you put your, your iPhone in or, or your laptop or whatever. And because I did some research on it and uh, there was a lot of people that said it was a scam. And Nick Penault said he personally, first of all, he did disclose he has a vested interest in it, but he said that he, he tested it himself and that 
the results were great. So I, I don't, I'm not sure. And which, and which one was he promoting? Safe sleep. Safe sleep? Sleep. Sleeve. Okay. Yeah, like sleeve on a shirt. Safe sleeve. So yeah. yeah. The company that we were looking into. Is that what you have, Ann? Is that safe sleep? Yeah. Okay. Yep. There's also yeah. the Defender Shield, which is a case yeah. that you put your phone in and then it stops the EMF from coming out the back. It could still come out of the, you know, like the camera hole or something. The, the EMF radiates actually out of the entire phone, not just out of the back. Because it's not, it would have to be blocked to cause it to only come out the edges. It comes out of the entire phone. Um, but to have the Defender Shield at least stops it when you're carrying it in your back pocket. And sure. stops when you hold it up to your head. If you stop it coming out from one side, are you doubling the amount of EF EMFs coming out the other side? So if you put it up to your face, are you going to be getting twice as much, even though if you put it in your back pocket, you're not getting as much? Well, in the case of the Defender Shield, it's a, it's a wallet case. So when the phone is in the case, both sides are covered. So that no matter which side, I mean, when you're going to use the phone and hold it to your head, it's going to block it on that side, but it's also going to block it on the side your hand is holding because there is a shield on both sides. There may be some bleed through on the edges, but that's going to happen with any kind of case. So Can, does anybody know exactly how the damage occurs? Is the radio, is the EMF damage to cells or is it to fluids in your body? Does, has anybody, that's, that's the issue that I need to figure out before we well, talk about it more extensively. Can I talk about that for a moment? Yeah, I would love you to, yeah. When I interviewed Bruce Lipton, who uh, started out as a geneticist, and then got into further research looking at uh, environmental factors affecting the DNA RNA swing when DNA when the RNA starts producing new DNA, and looked at the looks at it and talks about and I I can't um, I almost can see his book his first book I it's here uh, where he talks about how EMF how all sorts of energies can influence the cells, so when I talked about it talked with him about it backstage because he didn't really want to talk about it on the show. What he was really talking about is we don't know yet. And what we came to agreement with was there's an environmental attorney who came up with the term precautionary principle. And so that's Carolyn Raffensberger. And so what we agreed upon was the idea that in the, the idea of the precautionary principle is let's not until we know. Let's not wait until we find out. Let's find out, and, and really how Bruce looks at it is that electronics, our bodies are electronic systems. All the hormones and all the entire cascade, whether it's the methylation cascade or hormones cascade or whatever is going to happen in the body is basically electronic signals of some kind. I mean, hormones have their own ways of communicating, but overall there's a lot of electrical action happening in the body. And so if you add another frequency to it, that's why, I, I mean, I stand in front of a computer all day. My hand is up. I'm guilty. I'm standing in front of a computer 10 hours a day. But at night, I have a router that turns everything off. I have it set on a schedule so that at night when I'm sleeping, there's no, I'm exposed to no EMFs of any kind. And I do that partially because I think when our bodies are resting, our bodies need to be resting, not fighting something off. Yeah, that's so brilliant. That's exactly what we should be doing. Yeah. Yeah. So I actually have a router that allows me to set a schedule in it. I bought it for that reason. I so did I the same thing with my router. I set it to go off at um, ten o'clock at night and come on at five thirty in the morning. Yeah. So that's yeah. That's back to what Bruce was saying. Is it's really it's just something. I mean, we're exposed to a lot of environmental toxins, so that's confusing the body or putting the body into a flight or fight mode. And it's possible that all this electronic exposure, whether it's a Wi-Fi or a cell signal or, you know, the electric, electric dirty kind of electricity that happens in an automobile as, engine as it runs because it's an electrical vehicle. I mean, even if it's a gas engine, it's still producing sparks and has EMF coming off of it. So the less we can have... I think the better off we are. And I'm not, I'm still going to stand in front of a computer 10 hours a day, but I have a lot of grounding and a lot of, you know, at night when I sleep, I'm in no electronic fields, no electronic devices in my bedroom, yeah. no Wi-Fi, no cell phones, none of that. 
what, what I would like to do, and I, I think I just need to convince my husband of this next project is to get the cables so that the computers are yeah to cables and we're we're not doing wi-fi i don't i don't understand why we can't do more of that you know what 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 happened to being connected directly to you know a laptop so at least if we did that the laptop would be connected to a cable and i could turn my phone off put it on airplane mode except for when i wanted to check my messages which is better for us anyway if you have it on all day and it's dinging and ringing you're you're giving yourself adhd by just having your stupid phone on all day you know so um, I think that would be a, a real, that's one of my next steps is to ask my husband how we can get. It's, it's a habit. You, everything I do is hardwired, but I do it because I do production and I do radio and I want the best bandwidth I can always get. That's sort of the first position, but the, sec, the, the benefit is I'm not in a Wi-Fi field. My computer is always hardwired and anybody I help design their studios is always hardwired because there can be other stuff can be carried in and on that. I just think it's a dirty field to be in. I now, just don't think by being hardwired, you don't have slower service? No, not at all. Okay, that's good to know, okay. No, hardwired is actually faster than your, 5G, your 4G or any of that. Typically, I mean, if you have an ethernet connection and if you're on a cable provider, whoever it, whoever it is, you'll probably have faster connectivity than you will if you're on a cell connection and more solid. Okay, well, let's move on to another topic, but I really, um, I am uh, very appreciative of you bringing that up because we all need to be aware of, of what we're being exposed to, whether it's toxic chemicals or EMFs or air pollution, right, or water pollution or, um, you know, all kinds of social media pollution. There's images that we should not be seeing and our kids should not be seeing that are like poison for the brain, right? We, we need to protect our bodies and our minds and everything from all different kinds of, of um, things that we're being exposed to right now. So I, I appreciate you bringing that up. If um, we do have an article on our website about 5G, a blog that we had that an expert did, uh, we don't have extensive information on there because that's, it's not my forte, but we, we can look to have more experts on to talk about that more in the future. Would you guys appreciate that having a, an expert on? Absolutely. Okay. All right. Great. So we'll, we'll look at that in the future. If you guys think of anybody else too, that you want to have me interview for a, on a Facebook live where you can ask questions or have on our mom's connect call, please just shoot me an email and let me know because the, the schedule is pretty open for um, 2019. And I'd like to get some things planned ahead of time so that we're not scrambling at the last minute. And I'd like to interview more experts. I think it's really useful. Okay. So please do let us know. All right, so um, let's go around and, and hear from you. What, um, what's going on with you? Are you having um, some challenges or difficulties in what you're up to? Or are you having some success? Like what, what are you dealing with right now? Um, uh, Caitlin, you look like you're unmuted. Do you wanna say what's going on for you? Um, not a ton, actually. Just about to start with my community and getting glyphosate removed. Um, <laughs> so I've been reading a lot of the info that you guys have out, so. That's big. And then I am uh, finishing up a book that I'm writing on vaccination discussion and going to be looking to try and hopefully get that published. And then also trying to um, come out with a beverage to replace the traditional blue cola in an organic glyphosate free version. So I just found my beverage distributor for that. Wow. You're up to some amazing things. So that would be a drink that you would take when you're pregnant and trying to find out whether or not you have gestational diabetes. Okay, and so you're trying a replacement for the one that's yes. filled with junk right now. Yes. Wow, so, that is brilliant. Fun. Thank you for doing that. So amazing. Do you, do you have a nutritional background? Uh, I'm a, well, I'm a registered nurse. My first degree was in kinesiology with exercise science and health promotion as my um, specialty, essentially, and then did nursing. And then my husband went to chiropractic school, and that's when we started to really get into nutrition. So I'll probably start the IFM um, Institute of Functional Medicine curriculum probably in the next year or two, but I do have a two-year-old, so I need to maintain my sanity somehow. But uh, yeah, so lots of big things, trying to get them all done. A little bit crazy, but yeah. Well, that's fantastic. If you want to consider Moms Across America to publish your book, let us know too. Email us cool. um, a little bit about that. That would be great. Awesome. Um, we're always happy to hear more books coming out about vaccines. We really appreciate it. There's a lot to expose there. There could be I mean, and there are books. There's another book out that's recent. I haven't read it yet about HPV. 
Yeah, HPV vaccine on trial. Yeah, I have it. I haven't read it yet. Have you read it? No, but I have. I'm. It's in my queue. Oh, it's right here. It's underneath my laptop to keep my <laughs> laptop up a little bit, so you're not looking at my nose. But yeah, here it is. So yep. Very cool. Yeah, it's getting a lot of great feedback. So yeah, it's by um, Mary Mary Holland, Kim Mack Rosenberg, and Eileen Iorio. Okay. Yeah. So a generation betrayed. Is what it talks about. Oh dear, and they actually have pictures of the ads that they use to convince, to scare people into getting them. Huh. Yeah. So, wow, well, okay, great. So you're, you're writing a book and you're making a replacement, a healthier drink for, for the diabetes, gestational diabetes testing and you've got a two-year-old. Yeah. And you're working on getting glyphosate out of your town. So do you have a couple other people that you're working with to get glyphosate out of your town and toxic chemicals, not just glyphosate, but only one mom so far. That's been the last add on to my agenda. Um, so I'm just, just been reading what's on the Moms Across America website so far to get those initial stages. And then probably going to join one of my, um, cities community or, uh, my towns town council committees in order to try and get my foot in the door with that. So great. It's going to be my first step. Yeah. It's a process, but it can happen much faster than you think because of the Monsanto trial. If you yeah. the printout of that press release and, you know, information that nobody likes lawsuits. So right. it's a huge deterrent <laughs> to yeah. using glyphosate oversight. So good luck with that. And please keep us posted. Cool. Thank you. Okay. Right, awesome. Julie in Florida, you, you, what's, what's cooking with you? Okay. Well, I got my banner in for the parade. So as far as I know, I'll be in the parade with my goat and a banner that says with moms across America at the bottom of it. So that'll be nice. It says toxin free community. Great. Thank you yeah. for doing that. And what day is that your parade? That's Friday. Oh, Friday. this Friday. Yeah. Wonderful. Please take pictures, okay? And post them, share them with Moms Across America or okay. with me. And I'll post okay. 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 So I got the part, I got that. And then I've been communicating with Howard Bigler. Yep. Okay. And he's, he's probably going to come to Stuart and do a presentation, which will be really nice. So I'm working on that and that'll be next week, actually. I have a lot of work for that. And then I also decided that I was going to write a letter to Robert Kennedy Jr., um, you know, the environmental lawyer that was in San Francisco as well. Um, Florida is just, Florida is just too toxic. It's not just one area. It's not just one city. It's the water. It's the lake. It's the land. It's the animals. It's the feed. It's the orange groves. I mean, it's, it's, it's like there, there's, it's beyond what's normal. Yeah, just normal individuals using Roundup. It is a planned attack on the entire state. Yeah, and for those who don't know, and you haven't seen my article about the glyphosate in orange juice and the use of glyphosate in Lake Okeechobee and the connection to red tide and all that, the EWG actually put out information that said that 3.5 million pounds per acre of glyphosate was used between 2000 and 2012. That's in, in many areas in Florida. So it's there's just being, tons being poured in, just tons, tons. Yeah. And right. And directly in the water too. Because yes. There's over 20 boats a day that are pouring, dumping it in, which allows when the plants die, they release their nutrients. And so that's creating this nutrient. They think it's coming from manure from cows and agriculture and it's not, it's, it's coming from the plants that are dying. That's adding nutrient density which is feeding the algae bloom in the red tide. Well and not allowing the water to go only 15 percent of all the water goes into the Everglades. The rest is all held back because the phosphate levels are higher than what they can allow getting into the Everglades or, or Everglades or it will change the whole um, environmental content of the Everglades. So it's it's really sad what's going on. It's, it's chemical devastation is happening in Florida. I'm going to hire Robert if I, if, you know, if that's my last stand. Yeah, well. Um, Somebody's got to make, no make noise. I, there's been too many people for the last 30 years. They've been making noise with no progress. Some, something big has to happen. Well, he's the president of Waterkeeper, and there are very active Waterkeeper groups in Florida. And, right. uh, and I know the head of one of them. So if you want me to connect you, we, we can do that. Okay, well, I wrote my letter. We'll see what happens. And okay, great. I, I do want to stand because there's no use just making, 
it's just ridiculous. I, I either I give up or I jump in with two feet, you know? <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. But we're, we moms are not known or and women are not known for giving up. We're, we're usually the ones jumping in. <laughs> I can't give up. I've been, I, I know too much, you yeah. know, and it's like our children don't have a chance if we don't get rid of this soon. I mean, even looking at the obesity, I, I watched the documentary on, on I thrive. And I mean, by it's going to bankrupt the obesity and the, and the diabetes is going to bankrupt the healthcare system if you know the conventional system which is our taxpayer money yeah it's, it's ridiculous and then over one out of six kids has learning problems it's yeah. just ridiculous you know and then the school board's going to bankrupt us from that end and then they're going to private privatize things with and that'll even destroy us more so they're just taking our sovereignty away from us and so we've got to do something soon yeah, well, it's people like you that are speaking up and bringing in speakers like Howard Fligger. He's fantastic. Um, please do, when you have that event, event, please do post it on Moms Across America and we will share it out to other people, okay? And we'll email the group, the people in Florida and sh send out a, an email for you, okay? That would be nice if people would show up. Usually I get about 30 people when I do a lecture, but it would be nice that people really knew you know yeah. how important it is to there's, an, there's a group too about the south florida clean water group or something like that there's a big facebook group that you want to make sure to post these uh events on them too okay okay because he's got a new alternative herbicide alternative that is excellent so he's going to be talking about that that's great we're very excited about it awesome and you want to share what's going on with you <clears throat> yeah my mute my muted no um I've been like kind of all over the place. I've been working with um, someone on her book, The Nature of Healing, Roseanne Lindsay. And I've also um, was walking through work the other day and they had all these tables set up. They had the VA, they had a table um, on mental health and they had a table for um, depression and per suicide prevention. And I just kind of walked through and just kept going to the elevator to go back up to my desk. And I turned around and be Being careful. A good little activist. And Hang on. I just want to stop you. Be careful because I am going to probably post this. And so anything you say may be public. Just want to make sure. Well, I, it's, that's, no, that's fine. So okay. I literally turned around and I went back and I walked up to the suicide prevention table and I said, can I ask you if you talk to these people who come to you about their diet and their lifestyle? And she said, no. Why? And as Many of you may know, I got into the whole activism thing by researching aspartame. And I said that that's probably one of the first things that you should be doing. And I said, because it blocks the production of serotonin and it's, it's so dangerous and it's also ubiquitous in our environment. People are drinking diet sodas. They're, drink, they're chewing sugarless gum. It's in practically every processed food out there. So um, I took her card and I sent her some information on aspartame and I, I said, you know, you guys have got, we need to get to the root cause of these problems and stop slapping band-aids on everything. And I mean, it, it just drives me crazy. And, you know, um, I go through this daily. Lucky, luckily for me, my boss happens to be on the same track as me, and we've actually had some good conversations that I haven't been fired from my job yet. Um, but so, you know, I'm just kind of running around. It doesn't matter, you know, what conversation I'm in. It always seems to lead back to to, to these to these things, you know. Stop using, you know, I was at the vet's office the other day and I was literally yin and yang at them about telling their to, to pet owners not to use glyphosate or Roundup products in their yards. And we're going we're gonna to be doing something with that as well. So That's I've been great. busy. They, they have, the vets have such a great opportunity there. They have a captive audience. They have pet owners. All they have to do is tell them, we advise you to not use Roundup. I mean, you know, it, they're spraying it on their sidewalks, their patios, their backyards, and the dogs are rolling around in it. They're tracking it into the house. They're licking their paws. And then we wonder why so many pets are ending up with tumors. Yep. You know? 
you know, I, I, you know, it's when I when I was growing when I was growing up, it seemed like you never heard of a pet dying from cancer, and now it's like every time you, you know, it's like it was hard. I was watching pit bulls and fleas, and every dog died of cancer, 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 and and I told the vet, I said, if you think about it, these animals are low to the ground. They're 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 in contact with this much more than we are, and you know, as you said, they they don't have shoes on. So their paws and their fur. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you, Anne. Okay. Anybody else have anything we should usually we just go till 530. But um, Carol, do you want to say something? Yeah, um, I just think, you know, we, we think that, you know, so many people know what we're talking about, because, you know, we're preaching to the choir talking with each other right here. But uh, I went to an event over the weekend and it was um, in my neighborhood and this woman, they and her husband, they, they do olive oil and it's all organic. They don't spray anything on their olive trees or anything. And they have fruit trees and stuff. And she was selling um, her jam that she made from her all organic fruit trees. And I looked down at the jar and you know, the second ingredient was sugar. And I said, that's organic sugar, isn't it? And she goes, oh, no, I didn't use organic sugar. And I was like, oh, I'm not going to buy this, you know, and I had to educate her. She goes, I just didn't even think about that. And I, I was like, Yeah, crazy. so many people don't know. First of all, most sugar, well, actually 100% of GMO sugar beets, and I mean, sugar yeah. beets in the United States are GMO, and that means yeah. they're also spread glyphosate. Second of all, even natural cane sugar can be sprayed with glyphosate as a drying agent. Yep, I told her. I told her that, and and you know, I just was like, oh, she sold it all. Didn't matter to a lot of people, but it mattered to me. I got my point across anyway, in a nice way. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. I, I that's one. Yeah, one thing I don't understand. If you're gonna if you're gonna bake, why not just spend like an extra dollar or two? to get the organic wheat, the organic sugar, you know, it's, they're pretty inexpensive ingredients in the first place. I mean, I actually, I'm going to the um, Indian store down the street for me and they have organic flour, 20 pound bag for $18. I mean, that is Costco. super, super yeah, Costco, I get the big bags of sugar. Costco's got big bags of organic, organic sugar. You buy it in bulk and yeah, it's, it's, it is not more expensive when you do that. It can be probably around the same price as, you know, conventionally priced. Or if you're baking, use coconut sugar. It works really well. Yes, coconut Organic sugar. Organic coconut yeah. sugar, and it's got much less glycemic spike going on there. So I, I don't, I don't use real sugar at all. Yeah. Well, thank you. Anybody else have anything burning that you want to share before we know? Just I don't know if I told you that in Lake Okeechobee, they want to solve the, the problem with the algae bloom by first putting, dumping aluminum in there. Oh, God. And then the second one is they're going to do a burn, we burn the weeds. Neither one are, it's, it's all stupid. It's just totally, totally outrageous to me. But the aluminum alone, it's just going to cause so many problems as it is. It causes ischemic strokes in children. They put it in, in vaccines. It's just amazing. Right? And it gets into our plants. It gets into our soil. And people aren't even looking for that aluminum that's, in, that's, that's causing problems. Anyway, I just thought I'd let you know how smart those people are in Florida. <laughs> Julie, when Howard come, not how uh, Howard's coming down, or Howard and Don. Howard, Howard's going to be speaking on December twelfth in Hollywood, Florida, to the founder of GMO Free Florida. Okay, Trisha Sheldon. So I'm going to go down there. It's about a two-hour drive, and then I'm hoping to have him up here either the thirteenth or the fourteenth. So. And, and and Don as well. It would be great if you could um, get somebody to video those. I video everything. Oh, you do? Good, good. I just don't know how to, I guess I could, I, it's on a chip and I think I can put it in my computer and then send it to you if you need to. Yeah, yeah you can You can send it through WeTransfer and, or you can put it up on YouTube and just share, oh, yeah. you know, okay. upload it to YouTube and we can share it from your channel. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just learning all that. I do a lot of videotaping. I just don't know how to transfer it. Okay. Yeah. I mean, if you only had two people there, but you videotaped it, you can right. reach 7,000 in an hour on the internet. So 
you know, right. it's, it's really important to videotape those. those yeah. yeah. We need all the up-to-date information we can get. That's all yeah. I know. Yeah. And you're inviting local politicians to come to the, to the, the commissioners, of course. I've, I actually got a thank you from the commissioners from the city of Stewart when I, after they banned the, the, um, the roundup, then I sent them, I gave them each a colorized package of all the alternatives that were available that worked and which ones weren't working as well. You are a rock star, Julie. You are just, just doing an amazing job there. Somebody like you saying, we are going to fix this is really, I mean, that's just how this is going to happen. It's not going to happen without somebody caring about it and taking actions. I, I really you just have to take care of your own backyard, you know, and that's what I, how I've learned. Yeah. Yeah. You start in your own backyard. Yep. Then you, you get glyphosate out and you get toxins out and you get, you, you know, get the, the hardest part is getting people to trust what you're saying. It's, it's amazing to wake up a community, but it's starting. Okay. I got it. I've got to go. I got it. Well, really great to see everybody. Thank you for being on. Really appreciate um, your support of moms across America and of each other. It's really great to hear what everybody's up to. Thank you very much for being on tonight. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks for taking the break.